r slash credit. Teachers who regularly get invited to high school reunions. What are the most amazing transformations, common patterns, epic stories, saddest declines etc. you've seen through the years? My husband graduated from a fancy prep school. Literally over 90% of his class are lawyers and doctors now. To his parents' disdain, my husband became a professional poker player. Whenever he goes to reunions there's a circle of these super successful doctors and lawyers around him because they'd rather listen to his stories. Edit. This blew up overnight. To answer some of the questions. How can you be a professional at something that's based on luck and chance? There's a lot more than meets the eye. Hunches and gut feelings are a very small part of poker. It's a very mathematical, probabilities driven game. If you're curious, consider looking up game theory branch of mathematics, and specifically as it pertains to poker. If you are very curious and technically minded, pick up a copy of Mathematics of Poker by Bill Chen and Jared Ankerman. How much does he make? A whole lot more than me, and I have a decent job, not a doctor or a lawyer though. It's a mixed bag of feelings. To come home from a frustrating day to see that he's won my monthly salary. What's the biggest he's won slash lost at once? He's won a tournament for just under a million, and I believe he had about 25, 30% of himself at the time. He's had a few more low mid six figure scores with various amounts of himself. When I talk about having percent of himself, as someone brushed upon it, a lot of the players swap or sell their action. The way it works is that you cover a part of someone's tournament buy-in with a little markup for the work they are putting in plus their edge, and in return, if they win some money, they then pay you back that percentage of their prize. This allows people to play bigger tournaments than they would if they had to pay it all themselves. As far as how much he's lost at once, there isn't a lot of losing an obscene amount at once in tournament poker. I think at some point he's entered a $10,000 tourney without selling any action. It's more about how many tournaments in a row you play without winning or cashing any. He's been fortunate not to have any super crazy downswings knocks on wood. It's not a real slash useful job. I don't entirely disagree, and neither does my husband. It's a common struggle among the players. Some try to add value to the world by accumulating as much as they can through poker and then donating a lot to charity. Others consider it a step in their life that then opens up opportunity to focus on other non-zero sum ventures. But two more points to consider. 1. How many regular jobs are actually making the world a better place and how many are neutral too harmful? Even lawyers can range from doing a ton of good in the world to bringing a lot of harm. 2. If you could sit in the comfort of your own home, no boss, no schedule, play a game you love, and rake in enough to make a living and then some, would you say no to that, because it's not a real value making job? I'd like to say that I would, but I'm not sure. I sympathize with his parents. I love his parents, they are amazing people. I should mention that in the 12 years that husband's been doing this, they've mostly come around and are proud of him. I've personally taken of time to make sure his mom knows enough about poker to understand that part of his life. Every few months, his dad still reminds him that he can take his LSATs anytime though. <laughs> Going to post my mom's story because she doesn't have an account. She was a home economics teacher and specifically she had one class called relationship psychology where every day to start the class she would read through that cheesy Dear B newspaper advice column to talk with the class on how they would respond to the problem. One day ahead of class she noticed that a letter published talked about a kid who sounded a lot like a student in her class and was located in our hometown. They always end the letter with a name and city and my mom was always very involved with her students and their personal lives. The letter talked about a kid who was terrified of going to college and how he got rejected from all the schools he wanted to go to, had no self-confidence, abusive father, money problems, that he would lose all his close friends, couldn't stand the idea of leaving his disabled mother, and that he felt enormous pressure as a first-gen college student and had ultimately decided not to go to college at all. She read it to the class and they discussed, and she could tell the boy in her class was very uncomfortable. After class she asked him about it, and it was in fact a letter written by him. 
he never thought it would get published and responded to by the Dear Abby column and was super embarrassed. D, like most students, never even knew what the Dear Abby column was until they took her class. Afterwards she talked through everything with him and talked with his mother and evaluated his options on how best to approach college. She taught him finances, loans, scholarship options, his mom's condition, and everything and got him to a place where he felt better about his future. Four years later the kid ended up being the speaker at his college graduation of over 7,000 kids, met his wife at college, all of his groomsmen, and got a killer job through his career fair on campus before graduating. She flew out and attended as he invited her. Was always blown away by that. Not the teacher, and not the full school reunion either, I'm not sure if those even still happen, since Facebook is a thing. But a group I hung out with of nerds like me in high school wanted to get back together and play deathmatch quake, lang party style, like we did as kids. I'm effectively a loser with no social life, and I'm scared of people, but this I thought I could handle, so I went. They asked me to pick up Joe on the way to the party, and I do. Joe was out of shape when we were kids, like a pudgy kid, that was all that was really wrong with him. He was smart, well kept, and rich as fuck, like dad owned a restaurant franchise rich. Not like one of the locations, like, the entire company. We always had the parties at his house. We didn't bring our own computers, cause he just had basically a lab we all played at. So I was a bit curious why we weren't repeating something like that. Not that I cared, I have my own lab, not rich though, so we could have all had a computer. But we went to another dude's house, and who cares, everyone brings a laptop now in a how. Anyways, pick up Joe from a really sketchy looking house. Really surprised. Dude comes out of the place really really big and really really dirty looking. Clothes were dirty and tattered. Looked like he had dirt in his greasy hair, and he had to be 300 or 350 pounds. He was big. Hardly fit in my car. Almost immediately he tells me his dad died. Then he ran the company into the ground, gambled away most of the money, invested it in stupid things, etc. And basically he tells me inside of a car ride how he blew something ridiculous like 100 million bucks. Whole thing made me sick and sad. One kid grew up to be that guy, treading the line between jolly neckbed and somewhat scary insul. I saw him after a full 12 years had passed. The worst part is, he was one of the most popular and socially adjusted kids in school. Always invited to parties, girls always trying to spend time with him, he'd always get away with absurd things in school because even the teachers liked him. He was just really funny and naturally charismatic. Not to mention fit and handsome. However, he was strictly religious, so he never had sex with any girls. A few years after graduation, he became an atheist or just a Gnostic, but by this time he had a dead-end job at a supermarket, had gained weight, and was obsessed with Dragon Ball Z because he related to unleashing his true power. So he spent like 5 years desperately messaging girls from HS, trying to say hey I can have sex now, but he was just not that attractive anymore and his social skills had deteriorated tremendously. He was rejected by every single girl that was pining over him just a few years ago, in high school. He ended up publicly coming out as a proud insult two years before the reunion, in a post where he declared war on women and socially adjusted men. He often posted about being a virgin and how Christianity basically made him an insult because he missed out every chance for sex he ever had. So at the reunion, he came wearing a white t-shirt with the words fuck you. He'd walk up to now married women that he had previously solicited and just smirked silently, waiting for them to read the shirt. He was thrown out by the venue after about 40 minutes since so many people complained of his creepy behavior. AI probably fall into the back quote saddest declines. I haven't had my reunion yet, probably won't be one for another 4 years if it happens. If it does, I'm not sure I want to even go to it. Anyway, I always talked about becoming a teacher and wanting to do it. All of the teachers at my school supported me through it. By no means was I one of those attractive sporty kids. I behaved in class and I done my work 
so I flew under the radar. So, I leave high school in 2013, graduate from university in 2016, then qualify as a teacher through a postgraduate course in 2018. However, my experience as a student teacher was so bad I spent the majority of my time down. My lowest point was when I was on the phone to my mum and telling her how I was getting on and the next thing was I lost it. I just started crying down the phone to her. I hated every aspect of it. I'm pretty sure it made me depressed and I still get haunting flashbacks of the other teachers I worked with giving me a seriously hard time over it. I put on a load of weight and it shattered my confidence in myself. It has really messed me up in general. So, I completed my teacher training and have achieved my goal of becoming a teacher. But, I have no intentions of actually wanting to teach anymore. My experience as a student teacher completely took the wind out of my sails. It has terrified me of doing it. But even then my girlfriend won't pay any heed to it. She keeps insisting that I'll look for a job, despite there being a serious lack of teaching jobs, where I currently live now anyway. So I'm now currently stuck working in a bar, not sure of what I want to do with myself now. Whereas all of my mates who I went to school with are accountants, lawyers, etc. And here I'm stuck in a dead end job, unsure of myself and my future, and I feel like I have no one to talk to. <laughs> Edit. Thanks for gold kind human D. I feel so honored. I'm reading so many of you find inspiration in my post, and I'm so glad for that. Neurodivergency affects everyone differently, you just have to find what works for you. Wherever you are, keep pushing. I'd probably fall into this category. I entered high school with a positive outlook and love for the school my mom and grandma went to, but that quickly turned to a crapshoot. They dropped all the classes I wanted to take. Shop, auto, etc. Had 40 plus kids per class that were unmanageable, and we were entering the entitled kid era of everyone gets away with everything. At the same time I was diagnosed with ADHD, moderate to severe depression and anxiety. After freshman year I failed every class, but journalism my sophomore year. Somehow my journalism teacher thought I should be recognized for my writing potential, and this had to be backed with support by at least two other faculty. But other than that I was failing everything. In the middle of my junior year I was passing Japanese class with 100% and that's it. I went to the advisors to ask about modifications for attention deficit, and they told me they would put me in special edition. I told them hell no, because the content was too easy. Anyone familiar with ADHD knows that uninteresting content makes it harder to focus, which is why I was doing very well in the classes I enjoyed and failing the rest. So mid junior year my depression got the best of me and I skipped school to sleep all day. I dropped out and went to an ALC where it only got worse one quarter way through what would have been my senior year I caught a huge bout of depression and quit altogether as I was only awake then for 4 hours each day. After a few months I began an adult learning program for my JED and other than math, which I had repeatedly failed and so never made it past geometry in high school, I scored in the top 10%. In other words, I basically fell off the face of the earth and just skated by with the minimum. Lost my social life in the process. Now, almost 10 years later I'll be graduating in May with an AAS and technical certificate in CNC machining. I stand at the top of my program, serve as the student representative on my program's advisory committee, have an honors GPA with an invitation to Phi Theta Kappa and run the school's machine tool club. I also currently have 100% in my applications of quantitative reasoning, math, class, and I have guest taught some of the program's CAD slash CAM class. I'll be only the second person in my paternal family to hold an associate's degree. And I'm the first and only female machinist at my company. So my high school reunion is actually coming up in a few months, 10 years, and while I now live about 600 miles away and have no interest in going back home to check up on the hometown homies, I still have a few friends around there. I also got invited to the event on Facebook, so it's also very interesting to see what's going on. 
Highlights of those attending. Our class president is the only one who didn't develop a serious drug problem and or rack up a triple digit body count among the women who are involved. Of the men. Well, there has been trying to relive the glory days. As for where they are in life. Think like the inspiring stories of millennial home ER winners who actually had their parents by the house in their kid's name. They also tend to go on rants about hard work and dedication. The irony is always rich with them. Highlights of those not going. We have jobs. We actually take care of our kids. And as a bonus a few of our formerly nerdy classmates got in shape but kept their proclivity for CS. I don't believe our valedictorian is attending because he's off doing groundbreaking stuff with his biotech degree from MIT. A few of those not attending are practicing MDs to our surgeons. As for me, I'm still a little salty all this time later that everybody saw fit to prescribe Jesus for schizophrenia, the Bible Belt, and discouraged me from seeking formal treatment until I had a complete breakdown in college. Then again, in the face of all the adversity I have faced, there's more. I have written books, made some great friends, worked some very fulfilling jobs, gone back to college, gotten married and got two stepdaughters out of the deal, who consider me more of a dad than their own biological fathers ever were. Maybe not a shining example of success, but I think I'm doing pretty damn good considering the handicap. I had enough of high school when I was there. I'm perfectly content to be passively petty and internally laugh at those who failed despite all the advantages given to them. Not a teacher. I'd probably fall into this category. In high school I was thriving by the time I left. Known to be very morally responsible. Had a bunch of potential. My friends adored my presence since I was so friendly and kind. Welp, I'm total drug addict now 3-3 years later because eventually people fall apart. All that hard work really meant nothing, sigh. Edit, apologies for not actively replying, I just got home from work. I did not expect this much support, and honestly it really means a lot to me. Thank you. And a little backstory I'm only 3 years into drug addiction, but I've been given stimulants for ADHD pretty much all my life, since I was 5. I'm 21 and diagnosed with severe ADHD and high functioning ASD. I only started getting high after high school when my ex at the time started emotionally manipulating me non-stop so by the, the time I left her, I had extreme PTSD due to being abused by her. I fell into a deep depression and cut contact off with everyone because I wouldn't let anyone get close to me again. I then stumbled into hydrocodone from wisdom teeth surgery and learned that I'm always in pain. It only escalated from there. I realized there was a bunch of lying horse shit and pretty much dived into polar drug use and heavy binging. Learned that I could get high from stimulants too. Just had to dose stupid high amounts that would be way I I I I too much for others since I had 15 years of stimulants under my belt. I've only recently taken hold of my addictions and have been actively working towards being able to control myself. I'm no longer a slave to these substances, but still have cravings out the wazoo. I have a daughter on the way though, and she definitely was a big push for me to get a hold of myself. It's been difficult but I'm making progress and cutting back significantly. Thank you guys for the support. I don't feel like things are quite as hopeless as they seem. Mildly boastful ahead and a bit long. Sorry. TLDR. Kids in my HS didn't think I was smart because I didn't take app courses and didn't brag about SAT scores etc. They joked non-stop when I mentioned going to top tier schools. Saw them at reunion. Shared my MIT degree and recent MD, PhD candidacy at UCSF with them. Watched their pride die a bit in an instant. In high school, I was there in the early 90s, we didn't have super clicky groups, most people were really nice and friendly. Nevertheless, there were many maybe 30 or so students that were all about class rank, where you applying to college, what was your SAT score etc. I wasn't overly concerned about that stuff and typically stayed out of the conversations but some were lifelong friends so occasionally I would say what I hoped for etc. One day a neighborhood kid friend asked me where I was hoping to go. I mentioned I was a little interested in the Air Force Academy because I wanted to study engineering and be a pilot. 
At the time I was taking some aviation tech classes from the local tech school instead of AppCalc, AppBio, AppChemical, AppHistory etc. and they thought it was beneath them. He laughed at me and said since my parents didn't go to college I obviously had no idea how hard it was to get into a school like that. His dad happened to go to West Point and was a lawyer, so he was also clearly going to be successful, and he sure put me in my place, laughing the whole time, and for the remaining months fellow students he would poke fun at me for the sheer idea of it all, whenever he saw me. My 10 year reunion happened to coincide with my youngest brother's wedding, so I attended it on short notice. Attending on short notice meant no history or current information about you are provided. When I got there the initial conversations were nice enough and many of them were great people, some went to college, some went to tech programs, some had families etc. However, at some point an hour or so in the neighborhood kid and handful of his closest friends jumped in and were grandstanding about their general greatness etc. When they probed about my situation I told them that I ended up going to the local community college a year while I decided what I wanted to do, to which they laughed and said stuff like told you so to each other. Then I told them I ended up going to MIT instead of the Air Force Academy and that I got my undergraduate degree in maths instead of engineering. After that I had decided to go to med school and got into MSTP programs at UCSF. Stanford, Chicago and Akla. I was, at that time, an MD-PhD candidate at UCSF finishing up the PhD portion soon, and then I would go back and finish my third and fourth year of med school right after. I was of course called a liar and all that, so I showed my UCSF ID, which was in my wallet, that read in large letters under my picture and name student, School of Medicine. There was probably a 4 day pause, at least it felt that way, then those guys shut up the rest of the night. The looks on their faces was priceless, and before they could leave I told them the aviation program was great, and they could still take it as adults. End note, aviation tech at that technical school changed my life. It taught me to work hard, every job is important. To understand that knowledge for the sake of knowledge is great, but understanding how to apply it is what sets you apart. I learned to think practically as well as academically, and I learned that problems and failures are the best learning experiences. The teacher of that course was amazing, and assisted every student with their academic strengths and shortcomings with true vision, and made every person better than they were when they started. Whether they wanted to fix planes, bartend or become doctors, he took your dreams seriously, and offered all his knowledge and assistance at every turn. Although, he often gave up wisdom through parables about fixing planes and s asterisk asterisk asterisk. He retired shortly after my tenure there, but the man's legacy lives on, going to have to visit him next time I'm in town. I grew up in a medium sized midwestern town. I went to one of the poorer high schools on the north side of town. The two groups to hang out with were the ultra religious. Pentecostal slash assemblers of God, or the troublemakers. There were very few groups in between, especially for a poor kid. You were either going to church three times a week, or were mainlining crank, the drug of choice at the time. I never felt comfortable with either group, but fell into the later minus the crank use. I always knew I didn't belong in that town, and that there was more to life so at 20 I ran from that town as quickly as possible, and cut ties with everyone in it, including family. It's still the best decision I have ever made. I didn't friend anyone on social media or, or even check in with old friends or family. Shoot forward 15 years and I'd get an invite to the FASA book group for the reunion. It spurred my curiosity and I looked up people on the page and several old friends pages. I stalked it a bit like many of us do, just to see what happened to people. It's amazing that people are still living the exact same lives as they did in high school. Minimum wage jobs, field parties, hanging out at the same places. Hell many were living in the same places and driving the same cars. A few are dead, apparently, and not surprisingly, drug related. Virtually all have multiple kids and a divorce or two. Not many went to college. I only found one who is living more than 50 miles from the high school. Lots of trailer homes and confederate flags on their pages, but this was the case, even when I lived there. 
It's a tough life, and it shows on many. The success stories. A guy that was a good friend made something of himself as a respiratory therapist then quit that to be a weight loss coach and seems to be making a go of it. A super religious and super hot girl who is now happily married to woman. She seems to have been cast out by her family, but they have two kids who seems and have a really positive life slash attitude. Another guy, one of the few geeks, is now a semi-famous magician. Sad stories. The smartest girl in class, who was also super sweet and someone I knew since kindergarten, father was arrested. Turns out he was sexually abusing her and all her sisters their entire lives. I feel sad knowing that was going on as she was truly a good soul. She seems happy now and is giving better than most others, but I hate myself for not recognizing the situation. Another very good friend of mine is a classic failure to launch scenario. A super nice guy, smart and strong, but never worked consistently. He also got a girl pregnant back in high school. He followed after and relied on his parents for everything, and his parents were also on various forms of welfare slash disability. His parents both died a few years ago, and he is living their life. He is not working on disability and just doesn't know how to break the cycle. His, now teen, daughter is repeating the same cycle. Went to my junior high reunion after 25 years and surprisingly had more fun than I expected. Got along with mostly everyone and had fun catching up with old friends. But when we all went to the bar things got a bit weird. One of the guys was on the sports team with me in junior high and high school. Now I never claimed to be an athlete. I just did the team because I can run fast and it was good time waster. Coach figured that out easily. I was made mostly as a backup unless it was my actual event, sprinting and long jump. I was never the star and never treated as such. It was mostly a filler spot. Apparently this guy held some kind of insane grudge against me for all these years. He drunkenly told my wife this asshole better not be lying about being a track star because he wasn't. I then caught him taking photos of my wife when she was against the wall looking through her phone. He then showed the photos off to me in his drunken stupor. Finally we were all eating and talking about those who could not make it and how we missed them. I brought up one of my closest buddies I grew up with and how I missed the guy and drunken grudge guy shouted. How dare you talk about him. You never deserved talking about him. How he accepted your friend request. To which everyone tried shutting him up and apologizing. I was just totally confused about the whole situation until things slowly clicked into place after the event. Apparently he has been holding a 20 plus grudge for what I have no idea. We were actually good friends most our life so this shocked me. Then he was irritated my old friend accepted my friend request before accepting his. Why he kept sneaking photos of my wife I never knew. Was a very bizarre and both irritating and sad thing to experience for an otherwise wonderful night. I will be that guy soon. In school I was super big, tall, awkward and quiet, but made great grades and was super nice to everyone. Even though I could never hold a conversation long enough to make friends. I used to do people's homework for them and guarantee they made 100% in return for them buying me a soda or snack from the vending machines. Stayed super clean and never got into trouble and didn't even cuss. I was a bit of a snitch because I legitimately believed I was helping people and the teachers trusted me to help them with various tasks. They often would mistake me for being super religious and thought I had incredibly strong morals and would end up in some respectable STEM related job. All because I was afraid of my abusive mother who kept me super sheltered. I graduated at 17 and turned 18 a few months later. Moved away and started my own life. I lost 120 pounds, grew out my hair, dyed it purple, covered myself in piercings and tattoos, tried any drug I could get a hold of at least once, I'm now openly be with multiple partners, I've been wearing the same pants and jacket for a month, have fangs and reek of cigarettes and tequila I've almost been arrested for weed and prescription pills that aren't mine and got into some unofficial MMA groups just to deal with the pent up anger. All of my money goes to drugs, body mods, and the bare minimum required to prevent me from being homeless. 
I have loads of friends, but they're even bigger criminals and junkies than me. I stopped being quiet and respectful and became that weird guy wearing all black leaned against a gas station smoking with loud rock music playing from my car at 3am. Listen hun, those junkies aren't really your friend. Yes they've been through some tough shit with you, but it's not real. I got my stepdad arrested for domestic violence. I've been there. In a lot of ways. There's better ways to cope than unhealthy things that destroy you. Seriously, sit down and imagine what you'd like to be doing in another 10 to 15 years. If it's that or possibly being dead from bad drugs or accidental overdose then fine. But if it's not, you can make it through and get clean and do whatever you want. You just need to believe you can do it. I don't even know you, but I believe you can do it. Colon close bracket. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.